Hi. Uh, sorry, I'm still setting up. This will take some preparation. And, um, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, that's got it. Actually, can I drink with this thing on? Barely. I don't know how they do it. Um, can't see a thing. Let's try. There we go. Well, hi, everybody. That wastes about a minute of our video right there, getting ready to say hello to you. And I'd like to say at the outset that this video of the week intends in no way to offend any class of people, any gender, any uh, affiliation. It's just to point out a particular cultural phenomenon to explore this a little bit and to tell you how that actually relates to what's going on lately at the wine steward. Does this make me look fat? A hipster wouldn't want that. No, yes, let's speak to this phenomenon called the the hipster. The hipster can actually occur in either gender, male or female. I think more of us relate to the male hipster, at least I do. In fact, some people say I am somewhat uh, hipsterish myself, and yet that's not quite possible as a 58-year-old man who's still trying to shed last Christmas's holiday weight and so on. I just would never fit into the jeans, and yet these people are out there. Not a lot of them here in Pleasanton, but they do get out. Sometimes they do make it over the cultural seawall to our area here, and we might cite one on Main Street, but most of the time they don't get over the hill, over the Dublin Grade to us. And more often you have to go and um, go hipster watching, perhaps, in San Francisco. You might choose a popular route, perhaps the stroll, the area between Byright Grocery and Dolores Park, you might view hipsters there. And how can you, in fact, identify a hipster? Well, the hipster male will often have a very pristinely manicured beard, or perhaps even better, a cute little dainty mustache, handlebars, perfectly waxed and turned up. The hipster might also wear headgear, such as a fedora or a silly looking thing like this. The hipster is almost certainly going to be wearing horn-rimmed glasses, glasses that he or she doesn't even need to wear, and uh, perhaps be strolling along Valencia Street or somewhere south of Market with a cane or a walking stick, a very ornate one, again, something he doesn't actually need. In his other hand, there might be, oh, let's say, something vintage. How about a uh, Davy Crockett lunchbox, complete with the matching thermos? Of course, within the box, there would be no lunch because a hipster simply cannot eat lunch. Has to skip a lot of meals in order to continue to fit into those tight jeans. Well, you may be wondering why I'm going on and on about hipsters. I can say that hipsters also have particular tastes, tastes in art, tastes in music tastes in wine, which brings, brings us finally back to the wine steward, why I'm going on about these, these people. These people do occasionally find their way to the wine steward and are disappointed to hear that their favorite types of wines have not been represented here. I think it's because of the low count of hipsters to take care of. There just aren't that many of them. And yet many of you are actually parents of hipsters. This is out of parental love, something you've had to kind of embrace and come to understand. And so you might have actually had to share some of their kind of unusual wine with them as well as just another act of parental love and care. And so you may have in fact heard of these wines that we're now carrying. We now have three wines as of this week that will appeal to the hipster, the parent of the hipster, the wine geek, or actually, because these wines are actually pretty darn delicious, anybody out there. And why not broaden your horizons? Why not wear? A silly hat once in a while. Should I be tilting this? And I can't breathe. <sighs> there, okay. <sighs> it's hard to be a 57 year old hipster, I can tell you. But not when it comes to good wine. Have you heard of orange wine? Orange wine is a phenomenon. People walk in occasionally asking for it. I feel guilty about not carrying it. 
And my usual claim is I will carry orange wine as soon as I taste one that's actually good. Well, we've just found that. You may be asking, what in the hell is orange wine? Orange wine is white wine, where, as you know, white wine is normally fermented without the skins. Red wine fermented with the skins to get more red, to get more body, to get tannins. White wine? No. We make white wine without the skins. We ferment it apart from the skins. Aha! But not with orange wine. See this wine right here? Fairly colorful looking. This was made in Argentina of three grapes, Semillon, Chardonnay, and Torrontes, roughly one-third each. Those are all white grapes. They were crushed, and then they were put into a fermentation vat without being pressed, without the juice being pressed away from the skins. So what happened was this stayed with the skins for not just a few days, like a red wine fermentation or a couple of weeks, eight months in a big fermentation uh, concrete vat. Eight months. What happens? Well, the skins, even though they're white, they finally do confer some color on the wine, hence this. There's probably some oxidation going on as well, and so you get coloring from that. You get body, you get tannins. And we don't talk about tannins with white wine very often, do we? But with orange wine, we're actually looking for tannins. We're looking for something interesting in palate feel, a richness and a body. This one is wonderfully fragrant. I get kind of like grilled peaches, perhaps? Apricot? Definitely apricot. Orange wine. This is called Dharma Orange. Again, from Mendoza, Argentina. It's made by the same people who sell us the Alberti Malbec that many of you enjoyed in our wine club. So this is the orange wine that we're taking a dive on. And actually, I've just bought another one for Dave Everett's Las Positas College Wines of the, uh, Wines of the Old World class. He asked if we had a Hungarian white wine, and I said, hey, how about a... Uh, an orange wine from Georgia. Georgia, that is, next to Ukraine. And he bit. So anyway, they're getting an orange wine too. Now we might have a couple extra bottles for you of that wine as well. This one from Argentina is a real pleasure. A lot of orange wines are truly screwed up, and that's why I've avoided. Too oxidized, sometimes too VA, that's vinegar to you and me. Um, an orange wine perhaps should have a little bit of that aspect, but too much of it. And I'm saying, gosh, only a hipster would like this wine. I think this does cross the bridge and come to uh, perhaps over the cultural seawall of the Dublin grade into good old play it safe Pleasanton, California and still remain acceptable. Mm. It's very intriguing wine. This would be a chef's delight. A chef would be pondering, what am I going to cook for this? This is truly great food wine. Tangy, rich, dry, but there's obvious fruit, kind of fruit, cocktail fruit. It's cool stuff. Dharma, orange, hipster wine number one. Once again, with all apologies to those who consider yourselves hipsters. I know you try so hard. I'm not wearing that mustache anymore. Okay, what's another wine we talk about with respect to like wine geeks or hipsters? Another thing that people have come in and, and kind of like, they just like, they say, hey, hey, they might come to our counter and get all the way down so they get their elbow on. Hey, do you have any pet nap? You got any pet nat? Pet nat, doesn't that sound cute? Pet nat is slang, I won't blame it just on the hipsters, but wine geek slang for pétillon natural. That is a sparkling wine type. It's probably the original sparkling wine type where instead of undergoing a second fermentation in bottle, just like champagne, that rather uh, difficult way to make wine, this is that initial primary fermentation almost finishing, and then going into bottle to finish in the bottle. Here's Pet Nat, the first one the wine stewards ever carried. This is a sparkling wine. It's finished with a bottle cap or a crown cap, we might say. This is called Pet Mou, Pet Mou, which is playing on a Pet Nat name and uh, the fact that Moutard, a champagne producer, actually makes this. Moutard has bought property down just south of Champagne in the Chablis area, Tonnerre, and they make this out of 100% Pinot Noir, the primary fermentation nearly finishes in a big tank and then they bottle it. It finishes in bottle, the wine goes dry, but because there's fermentation going on, what do you have going on as well? You've got gunk, you've got yeast cells still suspended. Well, the yeast cells finally die at the end of fermentation. They all end up down here in the bottom, this gunky stuff. You've got gunk in the wine. You've got a label that looks like a lamb is uh, passing gas. I have no idea why the French have this strange sense of humor. 
The wine is pretty cool though. So there's gunk on the bottom. In order to properly serve pet nut, you want to make that uniform. So instead of having clear stuff up here and gunk at the very bottom, before you serve your pet nut, introduce that gunk. Yeah, serve this chilled, of course. 100% Pinot Noir, it will be fizzy. Hence the crown cap to keep in the bubbles. Let's let those bubbles out, shall we? Woof, that sounded like fun. Let's see if it tastes like fun. <laughs> look, another unusual thing for you to look at on, on our uh, this week's hipster video. Ooh, it's fun. They are, in fact, a little, uh, I won't say farty. These wines can be a little gassy, let's say. All that trapped CO2 gas, along with those the, the lazy smell, that's like primary fermentation. I think people have gotten into this wine because it reminds them of having a visit to a winery and getting to try brand new wine out of a barrel or a tank. That's what... Pet nat reminds you of just born wine, and therefore a little smelly, but safely so. I've tasted some pet nats that are downright weird. This one's acceptable. I like that texture. I spent a whole day at my desk with a bottle of this, figuring out this wine. I get it. I truly get it. I can sympathize. Mouthfeel from the the lees, the dead yeast cells that we've resuspended into the wine. Nice texture. Fun. Different from anything else you've ever had if you've never had Pet Nat, but now you can at the Wine Steward, and it's affordable. Right around 20 bucks or less, I think less. And uh, so is the Dharma, the orange we talked about. What's the other thing, these guys, if they do find their way, and no, sorry, not to slight the gals, there are female hipsters, we've seen a few. Um, no comment, whatever. What else do they ask for? They ask for natural wine. They're not the only ones. A lot of people, for health conscious reasons, or because they're just hearing about it all over the radio and on Facebook these days, they're wondering, do we have natural wines? People come in and ask for that, and most of the time they don't even know what they're asking for. Let's just say, natural wine is wine that's made as naturally as possible with basically no additions. The only ingredient is the grape. As it was organically grown out in a vineyard, comes into the winery, is crushed, pressed, no, no added yeasts. In fact, we invite the yeasts that are in the air, the same kind of yeast that might be making my, my bread. This is a different yeast that's invited to the wine party that's in the air too. And it makes uh, a naturally fermented wine, natural wine. What is the thing that we normally have to add to keep the wine stable to preserve it? Well, that's sulfites. There are no added sulfites here. And that's what truly qualifies this as natural wine. We're going once again down to Argentina. This is El Burro from a producer called Santa Julia, which in turn is a fork in the road production of Zuccardi Winery, a winery that cares a heck of a lot about its employees and has all kinds of uh, cultural babysitting, childcare and, and uh, class um, instruction, you know, get them all in school programs, very benevolent. Uh, winery, Zuccardi, and they're benevolent toward the land as well. They would like to do uh, farming as organically or even biodynamically as possible. And they were super kind to this wine by rendering it naturally. So uh, let's check it out. Mm. I don't have any order to sit that today. So yeah, well, I guess we're gonna make a pet nap and orange wine mixture and report on that later. Wow, look at that color. Okay, so this is Malbec. We have had Malbec before, right? We would expect Argentina to be the best place for Malbec, and yet natural wine, once again, it's a category I have carefully avoided because nearly every natural wine I've had is undrinkable, or at least it doesn't age long enough for it to get like from Argentina to our market. This wine has done really well. I think the organically grown fruit, the fact that this is Malbec, and so it's got good structure for aging, and here we're smelling an abundance of fresh fruit here, just like blackberries and plums. Um, a very vague sense of perhaps Beaujolais, that really fun uh, pop of youthful fruit that you only get in a brand new Beaujolais Nouveau, but obviously much darker. It's a richer smell. There's violets. Mm. Man, this is a natural wine I actually want to put in my mouth for once. Delicious fruit and good tannins. Nice tannins. It's not without its tannins, but this is a nice kind of astringency that actually says, hey, where's the beef? Well, as Clara Peller might have said, we can answer the three wine geek slash hipster 
questions now. Do you have natural wine? Do you have orange wine? Do you have Petit Vin? Yes to all three. I'm so proud. The wine steward is getting hit. We got that out of the way. Why don't we take a break from wine and tell you very briefly that uh, we've got some new food, up, food items. And obviously, since this is going long, we're going to just quickly mention that sometimes what goes around comes around at the wine steward. This is perhaps one of the first cheeses we ever carried at the wine steward, Petit Basque. And then it went to Costco, and then we couldn't get any more, and so on. And so we were without this cheese for so long. It is so good to have it back. It's made in the Pyrenees, on the French side of the Pyrenees, by the Basques. And therefore, of course, it's made out of sheep's milk, right? And it is really good. You can equate it with Manchego as far as texture. A little more character, I think. Um, at least a little more finish in uh, the mouth. It's delicious cheese, Petit Basque. You don't have to buy this whole wheel. We do have it cut up in smaller amounts for you. So... Check that out. We told you last week the rumor was true, and the rumor has been validated by a freezer downstairs being filled up with the beautiful creations of Mary Denham from Bloom's End. The Bloom's End Bakery is our daughter's creation, and here are some cookies that you can buy frozen. Go home and make, like, bakery-quality cookies if you'd like. She's also done, what are these? These are buttermilk biscuits. How about that? You could take these home and have them uh, Sunday morning. Would that not be nice to warm up for the Super Bowl? There's also some other types of biscuits. What else did I see? Crackers and such. Would you please lobby, well, send her an email and tell her the wine steward customers would dearly love to see scones. Because I told you, I promised you last week we were going to do scones from Mary. It hasn't happened yet. She's afraid people don't, don't understand scones, at least her type. Her type are the best I've ever had. So send her an email. Don't tell her I told you to, okay? Just just do it and uh, lobby on my behalf, basically, because I really want Mary's scones again. They are so good. I'm tired of these. Let's go back to these. Which are more hip? I don't know. Hey, you know what else is happening? Uh, Valentine's Day in just a couple weeks. Gosh, it's only a week. I think it's a week and a couple days, right? The 14th is a Sunday, isn't it? Just a reminder that we have this beautiful champagne, among many other beautiful champagnes. This one just happens to come in a really nice looking box. Tatinger, Tantage, any way you want to say it, it's delicious. Brut Frances Champagne, and as you saw from our video last week, Eric Edgar has gotten all Martha stewart -y and put it into a gift box that includes two glasses. So champagne flutes and this bottle of wine in a wooden box, and all we're upcharging you I think is about five bucks, no big deal. Here's another example of that, because Meredith sells us the Pattinger and has done a window accordingly, and Lisa has just decorated a window with Laurent Perrier uh, uh, production materials, POS stuff, and was a little jealous about the fact that we had Tittinger in an extra box now. So Eric went back to work. Here's the gorgeous rosé from Laurent Perrier, also available in that format with two beautiful glasses along. So consider one of those for your Valentine's sweetheart, why don't you? We have gone crazy. You would think in January and in February we just stop. We, uh, we take a break from finding great wine and we get safe because it's the slowest time of the year. Instead, we have been our most aggressively uh, pursuing of new wines. What we have done, what we've never done before is what we have just done. We have just bought one Greek wine, another Greek red wine, Oh wait, there's more. How about yet another? And doggone it, I overbought. There are four red Greek wines. They range in price from $19.99 to about $24.99. I tasted them all, they're all really good. They are all intrinsically Greek in character. I can't pronounce hardly any of the, Greek, uh, the, the grape names. So I'm gonna learn along with you. What are we gonna do? We're gonna put them in a four bottle sampler. You can buy these individually, but what a great thing to do, to, to go home and get the lamb kebabs going and open a couple of bottles of these Greek reds, which it's lamb wine, big time. So get into the Greek thing. We finally have a great provider of it. The only problem with Greek wine has been uh, how um, sporadic its provision has been to us. So we feel pretty good about this importer. We think they're going to stick. And we want you to like learn about Greek wine with one big bang of a four bottle sampler. So that is now on our website, thewinesteward.com. I think it's $84.99. You wine club members get it by putting in your uh, your club code, your discount code for even less. So consider. This is another thing we want to just remind you about. We emailed about it the other day. We are offering this week only 
uh, the best prices of 2021 on a newly released 2016 Napa Valley Silver Oak. If that's interesting to you, you can email me, ask us about the pricing. We don't want to blare it out everywhere, but we are going to take care of you with very good pricing, probably the best around on an iconic wine that is, in fact, really delicious and super ageable. There's that. You know, I kind of sped up there at the end, so let me just add one more concept. We will have yet another Zoom event. We will be finally leaving behind the topics of France and Italy and finally do something else. So we're going to have Lizzie back. We really hoped that we would have Lizzie on our mezzanine by now. Well, we just can't have those events on the mezzanine yet, so why don't we get to see this bubbly, effervescent, and extremely well-informed personality in a Zoom format. So pretty soon here we're going to see, you're going to see on our website and hear about it in video and, and uh, the constant contact email, the concept of a six bottle Argentina Chile sampler, three bottles from each side of the Andes. How about that? And then Lizzie's going to come on board and talk to us about it on some upcoming Thursday evening. In fact, I think that's February 18th, so mark your calendar. The small deck will not be tasted at that event because Lizzie does not sell us this wine, but... I'm just geared up. I'm practicing. Thank you for enduring all this. We appreciate your support. We hope you feel as adventurous in your wine buying as we've just recently been and uh, getting the store up on orange wine, Pet Nat, Petit Lot Naturel, Naturel, and uh, natural wine, and Greek wine, and Silver Oak. It's back. <laughs> I'm now going to try the combination. Never done before. What do you call a Pet Nat mixed with orange wine, I wonder? I'm going to work on that while I work on this. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend. See you soon.